Hello and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday the 28th of June 2015 and the weather's fantastic, nice and warm and things are going really nice, I think. We just had a little problem with our chat facility. Unfortunately, the amount of people that have tried to log in, uh, we've had a little server error. So, uh, fingers crossed, that, that will rectify itself in a few minutes. If need be, you can pop over to peoplesinternetradio.com. There's a chat room there. You can log in there and you'll be able to ask questions and chat to us on that. Right. Now, our guests on the show tonight are two chaps. One is Curry Good and the other one is David Wilcox. Now, David has been on the show a few years ago. So, we're going to be playing uh, catch up with Curry and David because there's an awful lot of things going on at the moment. Um, from a, a national, international and global level and obviously on a cosmic and universal level. So before we do that, we'll find out what the communication channels are. Yes, communication channels this evening are... The communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Yes, 046-927-1212 is the number for the studio this evening. Uh, we also have the website, that is oamradio.com. Uh, we have three streams available from the top of the website there. You, will, you can p- pick a stream and listen to your heart's content. We are streaming in Ireland, streaming in the UK and across in the US of A as well. We've also got anti-social media, that is Facebook. You can check us out there, see what we're up to. And... Uh, just log on to Facebook, uh, just basically search Open Your Mind, you will find us there, you'll recognise the logo. We also have the TuneIn Radio app for your listening pleasure on Android and iPhone devices, just again, just go to tuneinradio.com or download the the, uh, the little app for your chosen device and just do a little search there for Open Your Mind or OIM, you will also find us in there. We've also got the YouTube channel for your listening pleasure as well, we've got some videos on there too. Anyway, there we go. Alan. Brilliant, Steve. Okay, now as I said, there's an awful lot of things going on. I'll just say, well done Greece, by the way, who are organising a referendum for the people. That's true democracy. Obviously, that would never happen in Ireland because we don't have that kind of government over here. So um, hopefully it goes well. Hopefully get the, the, uh, they get the vote that they want. Uh, fingers crossed. And um, they won't you get know, it if it's nothing to do with Ireland, the Irish government, yeah. I can tell you. Well, they wouldn't support them anyway, no. So, but uh, good luck, Greece. We'll f- probably find out tomorrow about uh, about uh, how that goes anyway and, and what's happening over there. Right, OK, just uh, we're going to get our guests on because we know we have an awful lot to talk about. And we know, like, on a local scale, there's Irish water protests and property charge protests and corruption and suicides and uh, evictions going on in Ireland. And on a European scale, we have mass austerity across Europe. Uh, Greece, obviously, organising a referendum for the people, which is good. Uh, but playing chicken with the IMF. And they're uh, 1.6 billion due, I believe, at the end of the month that Greece have to pay the IMF. And in multiple countries, uh, Eastern Europe and Yemen, all the kind of the, the wars that are going on there. And on a global scale, we have earthquakes and volcanoes, especially the Ring of Fire going off. Um, flooding, mass animal deaths, poisoning, you know, our food, our land, Fukushima and all that. So, you know, basically what we need to know is on a global scale, um, what's really happening happening on that, basically on a, on a global cosmic scale. Um, we need to kind of, the best people to speak to, I suppose, are David and Curry, the two best people really that you could have on the show to talk about the things that are going on there. So, um, you know, there's an awful lot of talk about Ascension, there's an awful lot of talk about Planet X, an awful lot of things going on that, you know, Sky Anomalies, we had Joanne Kramer on last week talking about Sky Anomalies and, and things like that that are going on. So, um, and I believe that uh, David and Corey have information that they haven't released, so they're going to be releasing it uh, on their show tonight, which is, they have an exclusive tonight on their show, I believe, with the information that's going to be released. Before we bring David and Corey in, Steve is just going to give us a quick bio on Corey and David. Yeah, uh, again, as Alan, as Alan mentioned, uh, David has actually been on the show before. But for those of you who may not be familiar with the lads, I'm going to just give a, a quick little bio on both chaps here. So, Corey Good, Corey Good has 20 years' experience 
physical and IT security, communications, support in banking industry, counter electronic surveillance, risk assessment, executive protection, Army C41 program experience, my lab 1976 to 1986-87. Uh, recruit into multiple black ops program and SSP experience, 17 MyLab experience, 20 years uh, from 86 to 2007, with some recall work done in 89 through the, through to the present time in various and programs that fall under the MyLab umbrella, uh, 20 and back age regression programs including IE support for ERT delegations, off-world federation conferences, six years in SSP assigned to non-military R&D vessel, uh, that is the ASSR, ISRV, Auxiliary Specialised Space Research, uh, Interstellar Class Vehicle, Intruder Intercept Interrogation Program. And that is uh, just a little bit on Corey. David, however, David is a professional lecturer, filmmaker and researcher of ancient civilizations, consciousness, science and new paradigms of matter and energy. His upcoming Hollywood film Convergence unveils the proof that all life on Earth is united in a field of consciousness which affects our minds in fascinating ways. Brilliant stuff. Now, Corey and David are very, very busy people, so we're lucky to have them on the show. And um, so basically, hold on to your seats, because uh, the information you're going to hear tonight is going to be mind-blowing. Good evening, chaps. How are you doing? Very well. Doing, doing well, thank you. Great stuff. Right, so just so people know who's who, I'll just say, good evening, Corey. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And David, good evening. How are you? Uh, it's the first time I've been called a lad or a chap in quite some time, and I'm happy about that. <laughs> no problem at all. Glad to have both I'm here. waiting for mate now. Do you guys use mate too, or is that more Australian? Uh, that's more Australian, really. And we, you, can, we can deal with it if you like, mate. That's in, in, the <laughs> U- yeah, in, the, in the UK, they'd probably call you mate as well. But we, we yeah. can do that. We can do that. Um, chaps, it's brilliant having both you on. I know you have the exclusive information you're going to be talking to us about tonight and it's really good now we just talked before the show and i think a lot of people are going to be really interested to find out really what's happening now regarding a cosmic universal level on a planetary level and basically what's going to be happening in the future but um david i think you can probably give us a quick synopsis on basically a little bit of history before we move on because we only have an hour and 45 minutes and we're going to try and cram in as much as we can in that time and we know that we won't be able to get through all the questions because there's going to be loads of questions coming in but we will do our best but David if I pass it over to you if you want to do a quick um, intro and then we'll take it from there. Sure I appreciate that Alan. Uh, My experience with this black ops world, if you want to call it that, goes back to when I was in college and a friend of mine had his physics professor tell the whole class that Roswell really happened and that it was being concealed by NASA. He then had a private meeting with that professor and the professor told him that, in fact, Roswell did happen and told him about the propulsion systems and said there were three types of beings in the craft and that the tallest of them looked like humans on Earth. Uh, This actually was what triggered me into doing UFO research. The year was 1993 when I got this information, and I began to just devour books, and over the years I hunted out insiders, and it has been a very hard-earned, painstaking journey to find people who know what's going on. Uh, It becomes clear, once you really get into this, that Roswell did happen, that... The United States military industrial complex did develop anti-gravity craft, but then you have to jump much farther down the rabbit hole to see that if they have craft that could leave the Earth, they obviously have been doing it for a long time, and if they're going to go out into our solar system, they're going to build stuff. So what we now have, according to Corey's most recent information, is a faction within what is called the Secret Space Program, or SSP, and that faction is called the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, or ICC. So if Corey says ICC, that's what he's talking about. The ICC is a group of all the major big military defense contractors, and they have gone into business. That's the main thing they're doing out there, is manufacturing technology that is so high-tech they would never want it to be manufactured on Earth because they're worried that we would get our hands on it. 
So they have become extremely advanced. They have very high sophistication. And we just found out that they are, in fact, in very regular trade with almost 900 different extraterrestrial civilizations because their stuff is the best on the block. And then there are many more civilizations that they have some degree of trade with. So we are talking about a massive, massive industrial operation. If you think about what the United States was like in the first half of the 20th century, all the industrialization that took place with the development of the automobile and the development of paved roads, and then on into World War II and how the people were used to build bombs and aircraft and weapons. All that type of momentum has continued. It's just that it's all been moved up into space, and all the money that has been stolen from us through a variety of false flags and you know, human trafficking, drug smuggling, pornography, uh, financial tyranny, fake wars, they're always a lot more expensive than what it really costs, and all the profits are being taken and developed into space, which has now created a huge, huge industrial operation with technology so advanced that once it is returned to the people, and that's what all this is about, is, is a revolution that is taking place in the space program that Corey is on the cutting edge of, that revolution will lead to humans on Earth getting technology that will immediately put us into everything you see on Star Trek. Right. And how soon do you think this is going to happen? Corey, what do you think? I don't know. Well, you know, a lot of that depends on us. Um, you know, there's so many dates that have been put forth that, you know, come and go that, you know, I'm not going to put out an arbitrary date. Um, but um, from everything that's being told to me by the, the Blue Avians is that uh, much of this depends on us and, um, you know, our, us going through our awakening process and uh, it's going to occur um, by there, – there has been a lot of uh, intel that's been gathered by uh, um, defectors from, I guess, the Earth terms are like the Illuminati, Cabal, um, that kind of thing. In the secret space program, they like to take away the mystique and the magic and just call them secret Earth government syndicates to make them the criminals that they really are. And um, a lot of these people have seen the writing on the wall, and they've defected, and they've been provi providing a lot of information and also agreeing to testify in the, in, the, in the near future. Okay, can I touch base with you on that? Because what we're seeing here, obviously, what we see on the Internet and things that are going on, even with the shooting in Tunisia, um, the last, you know, just false flags and things going on, if the cabal are, if their back is against the wall and they realize that they're losing the battle and some are defecting over to the good side, surely we would, we would see a ramping down or a closing down of the, the, the system and things starting to change. But what we're seeing from where, what we're, from where we, we are sitting is an increase. We're seeing more of a totalitarian government. We're seeing Absolutely. more restrictions coming in. And Ireland... You know, we have a population of 4.4 million in Ireland. We're talking about two suicides a day. There's massive evictions going on. The banks are pushing and pushing and pushing. And just, it's unbelievable what's going on. And on one hand, I'm hearing that the cabal have the back against the wall. And they, there are just defections going on. But on the other side, I'm physically seeing, um, you know, George Orwell, 1984. Actually, a worse case of that. Well, the, the answer is twofold. The, the, I guess, I'll, I'll go by the Earth terms, the Illuminati and Cabal, they've romanticized things among themselves, and they've said, we will take everything and give nothing until there's a short drop and a sudden stop. That's referring to being caught and hung on a rope, being lynched. And a mortally wounded bear is that it's most dangerous. So these types of false flags are actually going to pick up more. It's going to get a little bit more crazy before you see any type of ramping down. And on the second side, these 
energetic waves that are coming into the solar system, or actually our solar system is entering into a part of the galaxy that is of a higher vibrational uh, nature, this is affecting the consciousness of a lot of people. And a lot of the lower vibrational, you know, service to self uh, type of people are having a very difficult time with this. And this is this is behind, you know, I mean, I, I on the television, I don't even watch television anymore. There are, I used to every once in a while turn on the television and every couple of days there would be a, sh- there would be a shooting. Now mm-hmm. every morning there's two or three shootings. Yeah on the television. So it's sort of like an end times madness kind of effect it's having on the consciousness of, of certain people. Well, I totally agree with you on that. I think there's, we've, we've reached some kind of energy where it's just, I don't know what it is, it's just some psychosis or something's happening with energy on the planet and there's, there's loads of things going on at the moment. I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> there's loads there's loads of kind of negativity going on there's loads of things there's shootings and there's bombings and everything else and it's just like uh, the, the the lunatics are running the, the asylum at the moment and it's it's getting concerning to a certain extent yeah people are being triggered all over the place and uh, it's uh, you know and um uh, i i put out on my site that you know the blue avians stated to me that things were going to get worse before it got better. And that anchored a lot of people. They said, you know what? We've been through enough. We've had enough of a bad time. Yeah, I'm ready for it to be over. I do not want it to get worse. And um, I, I agree yeah. with you on that. There's a few people that I speak to and have said, look, we've had enough. We've, we've been through it. Enough's enough now. We know we're just getting impatient. Just press the button, do the reset, or do what needs to be done. Right. You know, I, I would like to define the term blue avians for a moment for those who don't already know what he's talking about, because some people have not read any of his stuff. Okay, go Thank ahead, you. David. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Um, so in the 1980s, uh, one of my top insiders actually worked for Ronald Reagan. His code name was Mr. Do because he was like the Tesla of the black ops. He invented all kinds of weird technology. And so he was there with Reagan and Reagan's top advisors, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, in the 1980s when they were wrestling with a very astonishing thing that happened, which is an object about the size of the planet Neptune came into our solar system. It was cloaked, uh, but it was very evident to them that it was there, and it started to circle the planets. It went to Pluto, circled around Pluto, went to Neptune, circled around Neptune, went to Uranus, And then once it got around there, they went out to intercept it with the craft that they have that we're not supposed to know about, going all the way back to Roswell and even before that. And the beings just said, we're peaceful explorers taking a cruise around the solar system. And the cabal people said, well, get the heck out of here. You're not wanted here. And they said, okay, fine, we'll go, no problem. Well, then, as Corey has indicated, uh, beginning in the late 1990s, we had a huge proliferation of giant spears come into our solar system. And I was following this story on a website called cyberspaceorbit.com. There was a guy, Kent Stedman, who was talking about what he called sun cruisers. And right on the NASA feed of SOHO, which is the solar observation satellite, we were seeing these huge planet-sized glowing objects coming and going out of the sun. And I wondered what the heck was going on. Nobody really knew back then. Well, it turns out that these spheres have been coming in all along, but then there was a huge spike of them around 2012, which coincidentally or not coincidentally is the end date of the Mayan calendar. Hmm. Uh, This is something that people can laugh off on the Internet and say, oh, these guys are just making up a bunch of stuff. Yet I've heard it from multiple insiders who demonstrated credibility that this is happening, and it is a very big shock to the space program because – What has occurred is that these spheres have beings that have showed up in them that they have never encountered. Now, they've encountered many, many thousands of different types of extraterrestrial life, all of which are more or less hominid or human in appearance to some degree. They have a a head, they have arms and legs, they walk on two feet. That's very standard. But what they haven't seen is these beings that have showed up in these spheres – It's caused great confusion 
And interestingly enough, the same faction of the space program that Corey worked in, which is called Solar Warden, actually has broken away from the rest of the space program, and they are the ones that started this initiative to defeat the cabal on Earth, to bring down the financial tyranny that is now threatening Ireland, that's now threatening Greece, and many other countries as well. And their goal is to get us all this technology. They couldn't have done that on their own. They don't have the capability. And what's happened is that these sphere beings, of which the blue avians literally were saying is a human bird morph, it's a humanoid bird, mm. uh, these blue avians are one of five groups that are helping ensure that we have this smooth transition into this golden age. But they have to do this under the prime directive. They have to follow free will, which means they can't just come in and rescue us. That would totally destroy what they're trying to facilitate. We need to be the ones to create the change. They're just going to help us. It's like the mother lion giving her cub a partially killed animal, but the cub has to finish off the kill. It's the same thing they're doing with us here. Okay, well, what about the negative ETs? They don't seem to be following any prime directive. They don't have a choice but to follow what is called the rules that several different insiders have told me about, meaning that we on Earth ultimately are in a holographic illusion mm. in which it appears that the negative is doing whatever it wants, but it's actually very tightly contained. And they try and try and try to do all kinds of stuff that would create mass depopulation, and those things are not allowed. So we have to really look at what is happening on Earth as a direct reflection of what has been permitted to occur by our collective free will. Right, okay. Well, I'm going to read out some of the information here that it was on um, Corey's website, and maybe yeah, both of you can have a um, just mention or talk about it. It says here, Top Cabal Insiders from 2009 said the shift is not 2012 but 2017, which is a massive solar event pushing humanity up vibrationally to fourth density. This is where PSI abilities come in, telepathy, clairvoyance, astral travel, etc. So we, we often hear about the shift or the event going to take place. We've heard this a number of times and we've had a couple of guests on talking about it. So, what is this going to... I mean, without going down the, the New Age side, we talk about ascension as well. But what's really going to happen? I mean, is this kind of, we're going to lose our physical bodies, we're going to die, or, or what's really going... How can we... Can you clarify the ascension, this energy shift for us? Well, I'll, I'll start and then hand it over to Corey. And okay. the reason why I'm starting is because I've been out there with my own website since 1999. I've been putting content online since 1996 talking about this subject, and what most people are unaware of is that there is a massive degree of heavy, heavily verified scientific data that gives us an insight into this. So, for example, in 2000, I found a paper called Planetophysical State of the Earth and Life by Dr. Oleski Dmitriev, and it was on a website called the Millennium Group. And this was describing a energetic shift that was going on in our solar system where Dr. Dmitriev was pointing out hard data from Russian astrophysical observations showing that the sun and all the planets, they didn't have all of them, they didn't have Mercury, but they had Mars, Venus, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto showing really bizarre, discontinuous, meaning very sudden changes. And these changes included all the stuff that we're seeing on Earth. Temperature increases, brightness increases, very noticeable magnetic field increases, huge spikes in the amount of charged particles in their atmospheres. And so I ended up partnering up with Richard C. Hoagland, the guy that's famous for the Face on Mars scholarship. Mm. And I believe it was back in 2003 that we started to work on this, that where I actually, Richard said to me, David, nobody's going to believe this if it's just Russian scientists. we got to move the ball forward and bring it into the arena of NASA. And so I actually spent about half a year, and I think it was at the beginning of 2004, where all I did is collate the NASA data that was showing that this is happening. So we have now irrefutable data points that there are changes going on on every planet in the solar system, 
And it's interesting because when you read the official press releases, they don't deny that this is happening. Mm. But what they say is this is a local effect caused by the tilt angle of the planet to the sun. That's usually what they say. Well, that's a conspiracy theory. How could all the planets in our solar system simultaneously be tilting in just the right way to get a little more sunlight so they get a little – it's not just a little either. I mean, we're talking, for example, Jupiter has has increased so much in the last – just five years, that the difference between the temperature change in, the, in Jupiter's atmosphere is equivalent to the coldest place on Earth suddenly ramping up to the heat of the hottest place on Earth, which is Death Valley. We had a huge storm appear on Saturn a couple of years ago that literally engulfed the entire northern hemisphere of Saturn with this big band that just went all the way around the planet a huge change in the colors and the striping of, of the planet. We've had just, it, I mean, I could list it off for you. It's, it's an incredible body of data. So, again, people are always out there. The, the paid trolls are saying, oh, there's no proof, there's no evidence. We have an abundance of evidence. The question also is, what did the ancient prophecies say? And that's what's going to get to the, to the meat of your question. I'm trying to get through this as quick as I can. Okay. I've also done the research uh, – Graham Hancock wrote a wonderful book called Fingerprints of the Gods, which I got right after I graduated out of college in 1995. And he talks about two historians who were at the top of their game, had hundreds of cited papers to their names, Giorgio de Santiana and Hertha von de Schen. They were the darlings of the history community up until they did their grand theory, the grand hypothesis that tied it all together, which they published in a huge book, that could be very effective as a weapon if you threw it at someone. It's called Hamlet's Mill. It's ginormous. Thanks. And what they did in that book is to show 35 different ancient cultures around the world, which includes all the big religions, all the stuff we know of, and a lot of stuff that's much more obscure, everything from the middle of the Pacific Ocean to the Arctic wasteland, wherever there's a culture, you find that they all were given prophecy about us going through some sort of consciousness change, some sort of activation of what it means to be human that fundamentally alters the essence of humanity as, as a species, so that we essentially seem to be going from a being of flesh and blood to a being that is predominantly of light. And so I also love to cite the Tibetan rainbow body in this, which is Tibetan Buddhism was founded around 800 AD by a guy called Padmasambhava, who apparently could fly and could push his hand through rock and could create all kinds of weird miracles. He could cause uh, patterns to form in rocks. He just waves his hand over it, and these uh, shapes appear in the rocks. And there's still plenty of sacred sites in Tibet you can go to where that happened. Those are called termas. Um, what he ultimately did is to turn into light at the end of his life, and then 25 of his disciples did the same thing. And when he turned into light, the light was rainbow colored. It was like beams of different colors. And so they called it the rainbow body. And there are a series of teachings that are specific enough and useful enough that the Tibetans have now documented 160,000 people who have ascended and turned into this rainbow body. And so then that would lead to the question, well, that's pretty freaking cool. Mm. What did they do? Yeah. And the, the teaching is actually remarkably simple. All you have to do, all you have to do, right? <laughs> all you have to do is have every thought be a loving thought. Wow, that's going to be a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't so, gotten there yet. <laughs> no. So, so what is happening is that on a collective level, that's like the Olympics where you can actually get out of here anytime you want, turn into light body whenever you want, if you can make it to that level of perfection. But what's happening to us as a whole now, is that our planet has turned into a pyramid. The original purpose of the Great Pyramid is the same thing. You go up into the king's chamber, there's a coffin in there. That's the granite sarcophagus. Oh, well, people say, oh, that means there was a mummy in the pyramid. No, 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 no. The granite sarcophagus is an ascension chamber. The pyramid was originally built by the same beings who have now come back in all these spheres, and they made a grand showing back then, giving us this pyramid, which originally had mirror-polished white limestone. That's been proven. The thing looked like a marble sculpture sitting in the desert, 
gleaming white. And you go into the sarcophagus, and if you have a person in there who's part of the priesthood, who's trained and has a, a special crystal they would use, you go through this horrifying ordeal where all of your negativity is shot up in your face. All the things you've done to hurt people, all the things you've done that cause pain, you have to face off against that, and it's a terrifying nightmare. But if you can burn off your karma in this nightmare and forgive yourself for what you've done, then you literally come out of that sarcophagus as a being who has ascended. Now, the, the Napoleon Bonaparte went in there and laid down in the sarcophagus overnight when France was in Egypt, and he had a terrifying experience, and he said, I will never go near that pyramid again. What's mm -hmm. happening to us as a planet is akin to the pyramid initiation. So, Alan, this gets back to your original question, which is, it seems like the train is running off the tracks. Mm, yeah. It seems like the Illuminati are winning. Yeah. What's actually happening is that a certain amount of negativity is being permitted to occur so that we as a planet are getting that pyramid nightmare planet-wide. We're seeing the negativity, all the things that we didn't bother to look at, that mm -hmm. we didn't care enough, that we, didn't, we weren't busy enough, we were lazy, we were watching television, we were drinking beer, we didn't pay attention to the stuff that was going on all around us. We didn't pay attention to a Luciferian cult advertising their Lucifer symbols in our faces in movies and music videos and the Olympics ceremonies and the Grammy Awards. All this stuff has been going on. Now we're seeing it and we're like, oh my God. And that's part of what cracks the shell that we built around our hearts, leading to the consciousness awakening that is predicted to happen in all these ancient cultures. These extraterrestrials told us what they were going to do. They put it in these prophecies. We lost touch with them. But the prophecies are real, and the electromagnetic changes in our solar system is just a physical effect of this vibrational shift, which is ultimately activating our consciousness. And in order to get the healing we have to throw up. So if you throw up, you'll feel better. And that's what we're seeing right now on Earth. It's pretty ugly, but yeah, it's, it's a necessary part of the process. Definitely. We are going through it all right. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty bad. But, Corey, what's your take on it? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, as far as the dates, um, I, when I was in the programs, there, I, I had seen the dates – that they had predicted a lot of this to happen were between the year 2018 and the year 2023. Mm. And apparently things sped up. Something happened. I, I haven't myself put out the year 2017. Um, that uh, I, I'm, I'm very careful not to put out dates. Yeah, you have to be very careful with that. Yeah. Ju just, to, just to be clear. Yeah. And in the secret space program, the the people that are the scientists that were studying this, they, they were actually going out and looking at these energetic clouds and studying them. And they're, they're more nuts and bolts. They, they weren't doing all the research that David was doing. So they, you know, they, they, they didn't quite know exactly what was going to happen to people. A, a lot of them thought that maybe people that they consider star seeds and wanderers, and we can get into what that means later, um, we're going to maybe kickstart and, and, and start to have some ascended powers in, before everyone else. And and these are the star seeds you're talking about, the, the people who are awake and spiritually aware. Correct. Yeah, okay. And they didn't know if everyone was going to start to have this waking awakening and uh, shared consciousness ability quicker than others or if it was just everyone was going to have it at once. So from from my perspective, I think this is one of the reasons they guided me towards David Wilcock was he had done all of this type of homework and he had a lot of other experience that I did not. And there's a lot of stuff that, you know, he, it's, a lot of his information has gone hand in glove with what I experienced. And it's, it's been really amazing to have the conversations 
with him about about some of this information. Okay. Now, talking about the... We, we mentioned before we went live about the Planet X Nirabu, and we know there's a load of uh, PSYOP out there. As one of our guests said to us, which I think is quite appropriate, if you bury the truth in a, in a barrel full of lies, it's very hard to find. And obviously, there's so much PSYOP out there. People... You don't know whether you're coming or going because there's so many people talking about different things. I mean, even if you want to look at flat earth and all that kind of stuff. So just passing that back over to David. David, you wanted to mention the Planet X Nirubu thing. Give us your take on that. Well, my personal impression of this does have some degree of emotional charge because I originally did an article that was an interview for Junvalo Melchizedek's magazine at the time. He had Spirit of Mott. It was a subscription-based magazine. And so my co-author for our original, the first book that came out about me, dealt with the idea that I have this stunning facial similarity to the noted American psychic Edgar Cayce. Hmm. And it goes beyond that because the planets at the time of his birth and the planets at the time of my birth, there's absolutely no denying that they have an astonishing connection. And that connection is so exact that I was literally born in the only time in a 127-year period after Edgar Casey's death where that alignment would occur. Now, Casey was not just an ordinary guy. He would lie down, be put into a deep state of trance, and there's 14,000 documented readings that he did where in trance, unconscious, he began speaking with omniscient intelligence. And whatever was talking through him always used the term we, not I. So it appeared to be a group of beings of some kind. This was before the UFO era. Casey died in 1945, so nobody ever asked him about flying saucers. But it was very clear that whoever was speaking through him had some sort of administrative managerial role in the spirit world over our planet, that they were running the show, more or less. So I come back in, apparently, having been Edgar Casey in my past life, we can debate whether reincarnation exists, but those who believe it does say that there's a facial similarity as one of the core aspects of this, and character similarities. And so I started to have the same types of experiences that Edgar Casey was having, which led to, in November 10th, 1996, having some kind of higher intelligence speaking through me, which took the form of, uh, I'm getting notifications. Are you guys texting me or something? Am I talking too much? No, no, no. no. <laughs> not, okay. not, from making sure. not from us. Not from us. I'm getting little texts on Skype here, so somebody's trying to text me. Anyway, um, uh, it, it is a very complex, weird story, and I'm just trying to lay out the basics for everybody. So what happened is I had this guy come forward, and he pushed me to want to write a book about this. I did not want to have a book come out about me being Edgar Casey, possibly, in my past life. But I will say that beginning in November 1996, I would start to wake up in the morning, and I would hear words in my mind, and I, there was a very specific protocol that goes back to remote viewing, which I had read about from Art Bell Show. There were various guests, some of whom had written books that taught you how to do remote viewing. I learned it extensively. I practiced it. And I got to a point where I could pass words through my mind and be in a deep enough state of trance that those words were not affected by my personality. I did not know what I was saying. And they often were encrypted. They would use weird dreamlike language that my conscious mind couldn't understand when I was deep under trance, but then later on I'd be able to make sense out of it. And, and just a bizarre example, which is kind of unflattering, was that one of the things they would do if they wanted to talk about me and they wanted to sneak it past my mind is they would use the feminine gender and they'd use the, the, the name Christina. And then I realized they're talking about the Christ consciousness, the Christ self. Hmm. So Christina is going to da-da-da-da, and she thinks da 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 And so, you know, you say this stuff, you're, you're so far out, you, your body wants to fall asleep so bad, and you just have to keep yourself right on the edge of falling asleep. That's the trick. So you're just blah, 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 blah. You don't even know what you're saying. You're just blah, 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 blah. Then you go back later on, and you transcribe it, 
and you go, oh, my goodness gracious. Because what would happen is <clears throat> I'd have a stack of cassettes on my desk. I still have all of them. Uh, and back then there was no MP3 recorders. This was, we're talking 1996. And I would sit down maybe two, three weeks after I dictated onto these cassettes and I'd transcribe them. And they would be describing what happened to me right before I sat down at my desk, which was astonishing. And it happened over and over again. I'll give you one example. There's many examples I like to use. I lived right next to Woodstock in upstate New York. And I went down Route 28, and I went to Woodstock. And I went to this kind of hippie uh, deli. There's a guy in there who starts talking about uh, Joseph Campbell. And he's describing how Campbell says that religions are like different, different pieces of software to access the same intelligent universe, which ultimately is all one and we're all part of the same thing. So religion is just software. So I have this whole conversation with him. I go back home. First thing I do is go up to my bedroom because I always want to hear what, what the tapes are going to say. Sit down, pop the tape in the recorder, hit play, start transcribing. And it's my voice talking on behalf of these beings. And the first thing that my voice says is, we are now downloading new software. That frickin' blew me away. So when you have these experiences, and I'm not saying this happened once or twice. I'm saying this happened hundreds of times. One of the very first clients I had lived in uh, Tennessee, and he got a tape from me in the mail, not knowing what was going to be on it. He'd woken up from a dream that morning where he had a tripod, and one of the three legs of the tripod wouldn't stay straight. The first thing that happens when the reading starts talking to him on the tape is it says the tripod represents that you're not able to support yourself at this time spiritually and you have an un a shaky foundation. And he was so blown away because how could this be possible? How could they have known what my dream was? And I didn't have this happen once or twice. I had this happen many, many hundreds of times. And I became convinced that there was a, there, there was a directed intelligence speaking through me, I never in a million years expected that they would actually show up, but that does appear to be what's happened. So to get back to the Planet X question, <clears throat> the first debut with my co-author of what became the book, The Reincarnation of Edgar Casey, our grand debut was in this interview that he did with me that was published somewhere around September 7, 2001. Now, why is that date interesting? <laughs> it's five days or four days before September 11th. Hmm. This article comes out, and it talks about the changes in our solar system. September 11th hits, and everybody needs good news. Everybody needs to hear something positive. Somebody enterprisingly took that article, stripped it of all the stuff about my connection to Edgar Casey, stripped it of all my references where I actually had links to these things, and then said that all of the data that I put in there about the changes in our solar system were only done by Russian scientists, which wasn't even true. I'd already been backing it up with NASA back then. Hmm. That article went so viral that there were hundreds of thousands of websites that actually had linked to it. And on the email back in those days, it reached millions and millions of people. And nobody knew that I had written it or any of the greater context of where it came from. And then the Planet X people came in and they took that data and they used it to support their hypothesis, which is that all the changes I talked about and very clearly delineated that it was caused by us going into a galactic energy zone. They said, no, all this is because a planet is coming into the solar system. And on May 15, 2003, we're all going to die. And, of course, that didn't happen. Hmm. So that was my attempt to answer your question, and I'm gobbling up gobs of time here. But I feel like since this is our debut interview and we've never come forward before, this backstory really fills in what happened to me and the fact that these beings have apparently been in contact with me for 20 years. I never expected they were going to show up. And uh, this is, it's become a very, very interesting story, a very rapidly evolving story. So you don't think Planet X or Nirubur is going to be coming in 
or have any effect on the planet, which is what a lot of people are saying at the moment. There, you know, because there are there are a number of people out there talking about it and people saying, look, there's photos, there it is, there it's coming in. Um, so, I mean, what's the how could how would you explain the physical side of people? Are they seeing planet X or what are they seeing? Okay, well, we do have a brown dwarf that we are orbiting around as a star, and that is, you know, some people like to make a nice fit with Nibiru for that. That is true. This grand year that all 35 of those ancient cultures I was telling you about, the 25,000-year cycle they're all so obsessed with, Uh. that Giorgio de Santillana and Hertha von Schen, these two great historians, put it in their book, all those prophecies talk about the 25,000-year cycle. That cycle is an orbit that we do around a brown dwarf. That's been conclusively demonstrated by, uh, I'm trying to think of his name off the top of my head. Anyway, the point is, this data, I've talked about it in my books, and it's on my show on you know wisdomteachings.com. You can read all about it and watch the show. The point is, yes, we are in an orbit around a brown dwarf. No, it never gets close enough to us to cause trouble. Uh, and... The planet X theory is that this body will intrude into our solar system and will cause great cataclysmic disruption of the Earth and the other planets in our solar system. And my answer to that is, if you take a car and you put it in neutral, and then you take a refrigerator magnet and you try to pull the car with the magnet, the car is not going to move. The energetics in our solar system are so powerful the planets are in precisely defined harmonic orbits. They, do not, they, they don't just fly around. There's sacred geometry, which you could get into why the geometry is a function of sound vibration and all that. Uh. The point is the planets are very precisely held in place by massive forces. Nothing the size of another planet is going to come in and mess that up. It's simply not possible. The, the mass of Planet X, even at the most generous estimates of its size, would still be only 0.01% of the mass of the sun, and and it's like saying that you could fling a piece of sand at a cruise ship and have the cruise ship move in the ocean. It's not going to happen. Okay, and Corey, have you, in all the meetings that you've done off planet, have you come across or had discussions with people regarding planet X and Nirubu? Has that come into the conversation at all? What has come into the uh, conversation has been uh, that uh, we're a part of a uh, failed binary star system, um, the uh, plethora, the, the the vast majority of star systems out there are at least binary in nature. And uh, we, we do have a brown dwarf that, uh, that is, that we have in a dance going around the, the galaxy that our, our sun is doing. So, but nothing about an actual planet called Nibiru or any other name that uh, is a protruder planet that comes into uh, our solar system every 3,600 years that busts through the Oort cloud and uh, wreaks havoc. Mm, that's what they're saying. And so with all the issues that we're having on the planet at the moment, I mean, we're getting heightened volcanic activity, we're getting dormant volcanoes going off, we're getting flooding, we're getting plate movements, we're getting extreme weather. I mean, stuff that we haven't had before or we know of true records. What do you put that down to? I put that down to the... Um, the huge change in background energy, the the energetic, we're moving into a high energy area of the galaxy. And uh, as David talked about earlier, these changes are taking place on every planet in, in our solar system. And our sun is having massive changes. Hmm. So, and uh, there, we have an immediate star cluster, not just our local sun, But there's a star cluster around us that is moving in to this region of space. And this the whole star cluster is experiencing these types of changes. And um, it has to do with the ebb and flow of these waves of of energy that are coming in like tsunamis and having an effect on on not only the... um, 
the people, like we described earlier, but yeah. also the the planets, the tectonics, the mm. the weather, and um, uh, the the sun. Of the major effect, and this ascension process, and um, this shift that's going to take place. Just kind of clarifying that: is this a physical shift? I mean, are we going to? What's going to happen to us from our physical bodies? I mean, are we just going to start developing? Uh, these abilities are our bodies going to change in some way DNA and or do we I mean what what is your take on this shift of this ascension well from my perspective I've seen up up in the uh, research vessel I've seen um, several different theories down here on the internet I've seen an amazing number of theories but from from my perspective I don't think there's and I really don't think there's any way to fully know until we experience it. Um, there, there are, you know, there are a lot of theories about it. Uh, it's definitely going to be a massive change in consciousness. Mm. And what, you know, has been proven, everything around us is vibration. Mm. Yeah. All matter all energy, even the thoughts right now in our minds, they're all different states of vibration. And as the vibration of our consciousness is raised, so is, and our, and we realize the power of our joint consciousness, we can have a direct effect on matter and energy around us. Uh. So, you know, that may be one of the first steps that we notice to start happening. That, okay, that's you know kind of from my 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 perspective. Okay, well, David has yeah. David's done a lot more uh, research into this and and has a lot more theories on on what what's possible. Well, I'll, I'll pass this. This is on your uh, site again, and I'll pass this over to David. And it says here on it was a question number four or at section number four. It said the people who are aware of this shift are going to have the best seats in the house. I also think all the people who have been bravely seeking the truth with varying degrees of success will experience karmic shifts of a lesser degree and will help anchor others around them. Each awake person will be a guide for others as things heat up before the event. David? Well, I totally agree with that sentiment you just read. Um, there is an ongoing debate about what we would call the gradual versus spontaneous theories. Uh, the gradual theory has an abundance of scientific evidence. We know that gradual DNA changes are already occurring to human beings. Mm. There's some really amazing studies that show that. For example, a University of Wisconsin anthropologist, Dr. John Hawkes, studied the human DNA molecule, and this actually included DNA testing mummies, and he found that in the last 5,000 years, our DNA has evolved so rapidly that the overall structure of the molecule is 7% different than it was 5,000 years ago. Mm. And that is totally unprecedented. There's uh, something called the Flynn effect, in which we find out that IQ scores are going up so fast that every 10 years they have to change the scoring system because a 100 is supposed to be average. That's occurring across 20 countries, including countries that don't have literacy. We also had a study that was recently done. Actually, it was done by the British, but it was based on American skulls going back to the mid-1800s, showing that the average cranial volume of the brain for an American has gone up in the last 150 years so large that the size of the brain on average has increased by the volume of a tennis ball. So if you took a tennis ball-sized chunk of brain mass and shoved it inside somebody's head in a 150-year period, that's how much larger our brains have gotten. Mm. And this obviously is not just Americans. It's just that, that was the base of skulls they had to study. I started to say so, a lot of people would have a lot of problems believing that with the way Americans have been behaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know where you're coming from, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you on that one. So these, these data points are irrefutable. We also know a Russian scientist named Dr. Peter Garyayev was able to take eggs that had been laid by a salamander and then shine a laser beam through them 
and that shouldn't do anything. But the laser apparently picked up whatever energy it is that makes a salamander, and then you take that salamander laser beam, and you beam it into eggs that were laid by a frog. Well, guess what happens? And this I was talking about this in the article that was plagiarized all the way back in 2001, right before September 11th. The frog eggs get energized with salamander energy, and they grow into salamanders. I remember. And they show no evidence of having been frogs. I remember that. I read that article that you put up. I read about this. I found it very interesting. Yeah. 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 So what I'm saying is, if you, if you think about the salamander beam, there is a human upgrade beam that is coming through our sun right now that is beaming into us and it is actually altering our DNA while we are alive. Hmm. Now, that's one part of it. The other part of it is what happened to Padmasambhava, where he bursts into a light being, and something fundamentally happens to him. So, one of the things that all of, well, not all, I would say in specific terms, we have Zoroastrian prophecy, we have Hindu prophecy, and we have certain Christian prophecies all clearly saying that they are expecting that our sun is going to have some sort of surge of massive brightness that's much more than what we normally see. Now, in, in Hindu prophecy, they call it the Samvartaka fire, S-A-M-A-V-A-R-T-A-K-A. In Zoroastrian prophecy, they call it Fraso Kareti, or Kareti, F-R-A-S-O dash K-E-R-E-R-T-I. And then in Christian prophecy, they, they call it the glory of the Lord, that it will shine from the east unto the west. Would that be the uh, rapture? Would, would they call that the rapture? What's that? Would they call that the rapture? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the rapture does appear to be one variant of the scenario which has been grossly misinterpreted by most people calling themselves Christians. Mm. And then there's the majority of Christians are kind of middle of the road and don't even really buy into the rapture. It's only fundamentalism where it usually is heavily discussed. Mm. But what people need to understand is this is not just Christian prophecy. We're talking 35 different ancient cultures. And I'm not saying there's a bunch of other ones left to the side. I'm saying anybody who ever had spiritual teachings from the gods, anybody who ever wrote stuff down, that we've inherited, that's the 35. They all say something totally amazing and wonderful is going to happen. And then, thinking of that line, something wonderful is going to happen, you have certain authors who are giving us a glimpse of this in movies. Like, for example, Arthur C. Clarke, at the end of the movie 2010, you have the whole planet Jupiter get turned into a sun, some kind of big energetic emission. Arthur C. Clarke also talked about at the end of Childhood's End, that the whole solar system bursts with light. 2001 ends with the commander of the HAL ship, David Bowman. He goes into this vortex, and he experiences some sort of evolution into what they call the star child. So clearly, the ancient prophecies are expecting that there is going to be some sort of discontinuous energetic activation of what it means to be human, and what we really don't know and nobody knows is, is there going to be a solar uh, flash? How much will it do? How quickly will we change once it happens? But it was very interesting when I first started to talk to Corey that he had encountered, actually he had a remote viewing where he encountered information suggesting there was going to be a solar event and that it would have very positive effects on Earth. Excellent. Yes. So, so this negativity that you were talking about earlier about you know things going mad on the planet, and it's part of a, a kind of karma. Uh, there's a big talk about September, October, and the banking system collapse. Do you guys know anything about this? Do you think it's part of the whole kind of the cabal shutting down the cabal system? Well, Corey has direct contact with the Alliance, whereas I only get it secondhand, so he's probably more qualified on this. So I have a lot to say, but he actually has direct contact with them. So. Okay, Corey. Well, first of all, we need to clarify. There is an Earth Alliance that's made up of quite a few different groups that loosely work together, and uh, this involves the BRICS, Alliance and uh, a whole, all these other groups you've been hearing about. 
and they've been working to create a completely new financial system. And this financial system is just going to be a, a whole new, basically, financial debt system, but they're going to try to clear the slates, start over, and um, from what I hear, a lot of the people in the East are saying the West had their 100 years. Now the East wants its 100 years. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, from the information I've been getting, but they, they, sh they should call the Illuminati, they should, instead of the Illuminati, they should call them the great infiltrators. They have infiltrated just about everything you can think about. And they've infiltrated quite a lot of the BRICS groups and other parts of the Earth Alliance. And uh, we even had a problem with them infiltrating uh, some of the uh, Secret Space Program Alliance. And um, it, it appears that um, what they're going to try to do is co-opt it and try to set up a, a New World Order 2.0. Uh. And there, there are certain good elements inside the Earth Alliance, the, the, the Earth Alliance that are fighting against this, don't want it to happen, that, that really want to set up a, a new, good, fair, equitable financial system. The Secret Space Program Alliance wants to bring down technology that basically is going to overnight do away with any need for a financial system. And this right here scares a lot of people to death. They're, you know, they say, you know, this sounds like socialism. You're going to take away our money. That's right, Jeff. Um, yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, when you have, you know, food replication, you have free energy, you have harmonic and light uh, medical technology, technology that desalinates water and can turn all the deserts green, erase hunger from the earth to where humans are no longer a burden on the earth, changes the way of life from us being debt slaves, working nine to five, coming home exhausted, watching a few hours of the telly, and then going to bed next day, get dressed, repeat, mm. to having a more fruitful life following our, you know, um, what inspires us doing what we want to. That's, that's what they're attempting to do. These technologies that they would bring down would literally collapse all financial systems and the need for financial systems. Well, I'd, I'd love now, for them to do now, that. There, there's always talk. There's always talk about a September surprise, an October surprise. Mm. There's going to be a financial collapse. Mm. And one of the things that has been t mentioned is that we are going to need a financial collapse and an exposure of all of the criminal activities for the normal average Joes out there to – become angry enough and to wake up and see that they have been fooled and, and, and criminals have been running things for so long to finally start to make the changes themselves. Hmm. I totally agree. I think that's, uh, that's what we need to do. The exposure, I mean, w there's an awful lot of people over here in Ireland anyway, woken up in all different levels because of the austerity that's going on and people are beginning to wake up in mass which is brilliant to see but we need more exposure we need more exposure of the criminals on what's going on I mean we can see an awful lot but the trouble is we can't seem to do an awful lot about it you know I mean an eye for an eye is that really the right way to go when you don't really want to go down that way in a karmic way so Ab yeah absolutely not and the way they've there, – there was a, a Disney movie called Ants to where they had the grasshoppers that constantly had this mound of ants gathering all the food for them and, and doing all the labor for them. And um, there was this one scene where one of the ants asked – I mean one of the grasshoppers asked the, the head grasshopper, they're just ants. What are they going to do? And – once all of us ants that we're, we're all bustling around in our little ant hill, once we stop 
bustling around and, and realize the power we have in numbers alone compared to this 0.001% or, or whatever, that alone has them terrified. They have to keep, they have to create strife between each other. They have to create racial tension. They have to create uh, disharmony between religions. They have to create all of these problems to keep us at each other's throats so we don't turn our attention to them. Mm. This is all manufactured on purpose, and it is done to keep us from turning our attention to them. If there is a, a large enough event that causes us to wake up and turn our attention to them, and there, after that, you start seeing some data dumps of some of the Snowden information, the major Snowden information that he has that has fully been decrypted now, and some of the latest hacks that have occurred that you've only heard the tip of the iceberg about in Europe and the U.S. that has been done by the Alliance, then this is going to be information that is going to it's, – it's really, you know, the eye for the, an eye for an eye thing. It's going to be very difficult to not have people wanting to, to set up guillotines and uh, run the elites through guillotines. Well, you're just you know. talking about the French Revolution, basically, aren't you? You know, right. <laughs> that's really what happened. You know, mm -hmm. took out the guillotines and chopped off a few heads. Um, you did say you had an exclusive on the show, and I'm just watching the chat room there, and people are saying, we believe Curry has some ex information or an exclusive. Do you want to talk about that? Well, I'm, I'm not exactly sure which bit of information is the ex exclusive or not. Um, I mean, we've. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm waiting to be fully debriefed. When I, I was, many people know, the last week I was in uh, Boulder, Colorado, uh, shooting some interviews with Gaim TV, and uh, they're really wonderful people out there. It was great. I um, missed out on a couple very big meetings. And the person uh, who goes by the pseudonym Lieutenant Colonel Gonzalez, who is actually a delegate with the Secret Space Program, attended two meetings in my absence. Uh, one of them was with uh, a Draco Alliance Federation, and the other one was with what we're calling a ET Super Federation um, Alliance Council. And um, some sort of deal was struck with this human-like ET super federation uh, having to do with some of the more positive ETs that have been stuck here on Earth since December. And also some sort – something – I had met – I had gone to the meeting with – the, this Draco alliance, and I, I have refused to go back. It was such a, a, a horrid encounter. And um, he, it was his turn for this, I believe. And um, all I've heard so far is that he was told that they, he, our group were to succumb and agree to their demands, or it was considered an act of war by these, Dra these Draco groups. So I am still waiting for a full briefing on what this is all about. I have, I have not heard the full details. Okay, and you'll be keeping people up to date on your website with that? Yes, as, as soon as I hear, I'm, go, I'm going to write an update. All, that, that is all I've heard so far, and that's the update I put on my website today. That might be what people are referring to. Okay. But uh, I have not gotten a full briefing on, on, on what, have, what occurred in those meetings. Just yet. Okay, I'll tell you what we're doing. Uh, we're going to do, guys. We're going to we're going to try and get as many questions as we can in, and we're going to quick fire them over. Now, I know it's very difficult to have a one or two line answer to some of the questions, but obviously we try and please everybody as much as we can. 
Steve, you have the uh, the list of questions, and um, we can take two or three from that, and then we can shoot well over to the uh, the other questions. Absolutely, no problem. Okay, um, well, well, we'll throw this one at you, Corey. First of all, it says, could one of the reasons why the Blue Avians have put up a barrier with no passage exempt- exemptions be that the 2,000 to 4,000 species present in our solar system at any given time will be taking parts at the future trials as defendants, judges, jurors, scholars, councils, etc., depending on each situation. Absolutely. That is very possible. They erected this barrier to make sure that every one of the beings that has that was present when they erected the barrier that has tampered with human genetics, with human society over the thousands of years that has they call it this grand experiment that no matter what their agenda, everyone is going to be held accountable. Okay. okay, that's great. We're just going to we're just going through the questions here. Um, there's one for we're just switching between yourself and David. Yeah, this one is for for David. It comes in uh, uh, from well, comes in from, from uh, someone who is very very interested in your work, and it says, "I was thrilled in your last update that you understood that only human energy has value." and that everything else, such as fiat, monopoly money, is valueless. Are you aware of, or do you have contact with Lisa Harrison in Australia, or Carrie Campbell in New Zealand? Uh, I'm not familiar with either of those names, so I don't... uh, Also, the signal got a little choppy, so are you asking about the loosh, that the negative entities feeding on fear, that kind of thing? Uh, well, it, it's just again, it, it's uh, in relation to human energy has a value. This lady says that she said that you did say in a, in a recent yeah. update that he, human energy has a value and that everything everything else basically is value less. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think I get the the core of the question. Um, go back to the first book that I wrote that was a published book, and it's called Source Field Investigations. Uh, I have had an honorary PhD offered to me uh, just for the first half of that book. Um, There's a variety of red tape I'd have to go through, and I have to get a a, a approval committee, and I have to kind of repackage some of the book as a a doctoral thesis, but it wouldn't be that hard to do. Uh, I just haven't had time to deal with it. But the point is that I did create A scientific argument, people like to say that the haters like to say have no science. It's totally not true. There's over 1,000 academic references in source field. And the core hypothesis is that we are fundamentally living in a biological universe. The universe is alive. And what life really is at the core is not flesh and blood, it's energy. And so the term that I chose for the energy was source field. It's interesting as the investigation has continued to find out that there are negative entities out there that feed on our source field. Uh, So all the science that I did to prove that there is a life force now supports this idea that the bad guys ultimately are feeding on our life force. And so as bizarre as this sounds, we have these Draco that – Corey was just referring to. These are reptilian-looking humanoids. They evolved through this scripted intelligence into a hominid form out of reptiles. So they still have reptilian features. And these are the core villains in our region of the galaxy. They've enslaved and oppressed many, many planets, not just Earth. They're just a factor that everybody around here has to deal with. Uh, They appear to have run out of time. But what they did with Earth is they custom designed a fear factory. They created a a generating mechanism that creates this energy they need to feed on, which they call loosh. And we are seeing our Earth-based governments doing very strange things behind the scenes, creating terrorism, false flag attacks, 
wars, all these things that are really detrimental to human life. And then you say, well, why are they doing this stuff? And ultimately what we're going to find out is that although some of these people have zealously embraced the idea of reducing population and have very aggressively worked on those goals, which again and again are being blocked by the benevolent forces, but don't think for a minute they didn't want a nuclear war. Don't think for a minute they didn't want swine flu or West Nile virus to kill billions of people. Mm. Don't think for a minute they haven't tried to get World War III or, you know, spray chemtrails in the sky that would kill us or any number of crazy things they've tried to do. The real people who benefit from that stuff is these Draco because they actually, they are replenished by human misery and suffering and fear and pain and jealousy and anger and materialism. All the things that that the earlier generation, pre-millennial generation, was taught to want from television and media, you know, grab for the gold, grab for the products, try to make as much as you can. Now you have a whole generation that's on the business end of that stick, and they're very angry, and they don't want anybody to make money. And when guys like Corey and me come out, invariably you see tons of comments from millennials saying, oh, my God, they're making money. And so, look, we're not trying to feed the loose system. We're just dealing with a system in which we do have to have money to survive. Of course. We can't do what we're doing without it. Well, it's a, it's an exchange of energy, isn't it, really? Yeah. And that isn't by nature bad. No. It's just that we have been engineered to be in fear. If it bleeds, it leads. We're constantly being given new things to worry about. And this is reaching a, a breaking point. Uh, Alan, Stephen, both you guys... You're in one of the so-called pigs countries, P-I-I-G-S, yeah. Portugal, you know. So, look, it's already on the books in the European community and in America when Greece goes down, which as of, you know, an hour before we started this show, the Greeks have now said that they're going to pull out the banks. Nobody's going to be able to use the bank for at least the first day on Monday, possibly the whole coming week. Greece owes 1.6 billion euros, as you said, mm. and just over the weekend, the Greek people have pulled out 1.3 billion euros from the banks, and they did such a bank run that only 40%, this is right off of Telegraph UK, only 40% of the cash machines in Greece had any money left in them after this weekend. So if you don't think, if you think this is all going to stay the same, nothing's ever going to change, this is building up to something and there are laws on the books for the European community and America that once the banks start to go down, they can take your money right out of the bank and bail themselves out with it. Yeah. It's called reverse interest rate or bail-in or various things like that. And that's, This that's, is one of the things that Corey's insiders have told us a lot about. Yeah, and that's on the, the Reuters news group. They've actually said that all the countries in Europe have to sign up to the bail-in agreement before the end of the month. And uh, the Reuters reported, I mean, they're very blatant about it. And, uh, you know, they didn't hide it. They're, they're telling us exactly what they're doing. Cyprus was one of the first countries as a template that was uh, attacked right. for the bail-in. And um, obviously it's going to go around Europe because they, a lot of the banks are trading as insolvent anyway. It's, there's yeah, no they, money left in anything. The, the U.S. debt ceiling has been frozen 25 million below the limit for over 100 days. They're, they're still spending money, but they're just not even reporting it anymore. They're just printing yeah. money out of nothing that they're not allowed to do. So, this so is, it's a very serious situation. Yeah, so this is a massive Ponzi scheme that's just going to collapse because the figures yeah. don't add up. And it has to collapse. I totally agree. It has to collapse. But what Corey said earlier on about the, West, uh, the Western... Um, uh, side of things we had a hundred years because of the Federal Reserve, and now the Eastern side want to have a go. So does that mean we're going to have a resurgence of a new financial system, but still based on the Babylonian money system? Well, I don't think that's going to be allowed to happen. I think there there are groups that want that, but uh, there's a space program alliance, and that alliance is definitely going to get its voice heard. The, the, there is a whole effort being made here for a disclosure that is so big that we, Corey and I have been told, don't worry about the ridicule, don't worry about the hate. 
Right now, our goal is not necessarily to prove what we're saying. It's just simply to get people ready for the massive emotional shock that they will have when this all starts to come out. And we are trying to take the edge off of that so that society doesn't have a much greater negative reaction as the things that we've been talking about are then suddenly widespread. Because apparently that is going to happen, and apparently one of the weird things that we know from one of Corey's meetings is the people of the Illuminati calling themselves the Committee of 200, in one of the meetings that Corey had, they said, we, they were threatening Corey's life and my life, saying, we have kept you guys alive as a favor to you, but please don't, disclose, <laughs> please, please don't disclose any more information until November, and then you're fine. Now, that indicates to me that they have plans in place to do their own form of disclosure sufficiently enough that as long as they could keep us quiet until November, it doesn't matter at that point, which is very interesting. Okay. No, I totally agree. We've been told this before, that when the proverbial hits the fan and all this information comes out, that people who are light workers or star seeds will be there to kind of keep the calm, you know, calm everybody down while they're running around like headless chickens. We'll be there saying, okay, look, calm down. This is what's really going on. And because it will be like, you know... Uh, the, the information overload for people who are just in the matrix and don't get it would be just phenomenal. And maybe that's why there well, are certain star seeds around to compensate for that. And I would also remind you to look back to history with the Snowden disclosures and realize that once those things were said and they became publicly known, anybody who had been talking about that before went from being ridiculed to being a hero. Hmm. And all of a sudden, the media now has all this stuff that they can go back to and say, look, this guy whistle blew on the NSA. This guy told us what was going on. This guy wrote a book about it. This guy came forward. He told us this was going on. It's going to be the same thing when we get cosmic disclosure, when we get the space disclosure and yeah. the extraterrestrials and all that. Mm. You're going to go back and you're going to say, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Wow, he was actually telling us the truth all along. So you That's apparently what we're heading into. So you reckon, but if they said that to you by November, to stay quiet till November, and obviously it's going to look good if they do it, because if the ETs come and do it, because if the Cabal don't do it, then it's going to look bad for them. So they're obviously putting the plans in place to have a disclosure, and then they'll come out and say, well, we were going to tell you about this anyway, we were just getting things organised. Yeah, they, they're apparently like trying to yeah. put yeah, they're trying to put together some sort of controlled narrative disclosure mm. to where they can hide their crimes against humanity but give just enough information which would – I mean just announcing that we're not alone and you know there's possibly a secret space program and, and some of that information alone would be enough to blow society – up for a while, yeah, and th and they would be able to try to bury uh, their uh, crimes against humanity for and, and stretch it out as long as they could. Mm. And another thing that came about in their meeting was that in that meeting was that they wanted to. They said that for the sake of the poor people who couldn't handle it, they wanted to bury a lot of these crimes for another fifty years. Well, what happens is when you actually pull over the curtain, that's a famous quote I heard by a, a good friend of mine who's sitting about five feet away from me. When you pull open the, co the curtain and have a peek and you see what's behind it, you want to pull it open further. So, exactly. And, and you I can't, think can't, can't just peek into um, uh, Pandora's box. Once you crack it open, it all flies out. That's it. And I think that's that's what will happen. I just, I'm just conscious of time, guys. And I want Steve to... Steve has a good a few more questions for you. So we'll go over okay. to the questions there. I, I, was going to, I was going to see if uh, I can take a question and then David can take a question because I, I don't know how you say it there. I need to run to the little lad's room. <laughs> yeah, okay. No problem. Do you, do you want to go now, Curry? And then we'll, we'll, we'll pass the question off to David first. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll throw this one over for, for Dave. Dave, this one just came in online recently. 
and it said uh, seeing that the Draco lives off of negative energy such as anger and hate what would happen if we the people were to send out love and positive thoughts what would that do to the Dracos if this is something that I heard from a guy who worked for the Rothschilds which is the top human group in the Illuminati the top family of the 13 bloodlines uh, yeah I call him Jacob. Um, there's a few people I have who gave me extensive information about the space program. At least 90% of it I withheld from the Internet. Corey comes along, and we start talking about all this stuff that I'd never made public. And there were – I stopped counting around 50 or 60 times where he said something I'd already heard that I'd never published, or he finishes a sentence before I finish it. It was unbelievable. So – Jake is one of the top space program people I know. I learned a tremendous amount from him. And he was still working for them and not entirely, uh, you know, he still kind of bought into their agenda to some degree. But he really did not like the Draco. And he told me that one of the greatest secrets of the Draco is that if enough people on Earth felt happy and laughed, laughter actually, for one day, that one day of enough people on Earth smiling, happy, and laughing would literally defeat the Draco on the spot. They, they would die if they had that loose supply cut off for one day. So all we need is one event and, and go back to Live 8, which people in Europe probably remember that a lot better than Americans do. You guys had this great event where all the great 60s, 70s, and 80s rock stars all came together to end world hunger and defeat poverty and environmental destruction. And then guess what happens? All that momentum to change the world was completely deflated, I think it was four or five days later, by the 7-7 London 2 bombings. All of a sudden, oh my gosh, you know, I've been to London, I've ridden the tube myself. It's a great thing to have. It gets you through the city beautifully. Everybody uses it. Then you have terrorists blowing up the tube. It took all that energy, all that love, all that potential for us to really have momentum, and it puts everybody into the English 9-11. Yeah. yeah. So the, the war is very real, but if we get a positive event, that's it. They're done. And that seems to be, this is an interesting thing, is that solar energy uh, flash, that sort of energetic change that we go through, it's not just something that takes place on a specific day. It seems to be a direct byproduct of what is called in the law of one, the moment that humans reach what they call social memory. And that's where enough of us feel positive that the, the compartmentalization of the mind breaks down and we become telepathic again. And it happens apparently quite suddenly. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, like from what we see over here, and I'm guessing you guys see it over there too, that there's, there is so many things happening on a daily basis that, uh, you know, I mean, even even I believe if, we're, if Live Aid uh, were to happen again, I don't think it would have the same effect that it did when it happened in 1985, because back in 1985, like, things were a lot different. You look at today, and there's so many people immersed in debt, uh, people, you know, suffering foreclosures. There's austerity, so many people yeah. suffering austerity, uh, and for those who aren't suffering austerity or, or uh, you know, awaiting a foreclosure, um, they're probably one of the many who are stuck in the the whole mindset of reality TV. You know, because there's so many TV channels over, uh, well, uh, across the world, just just. Just churning out BS, you know, day after day, tw oh, yeah. and 24 hours a day. So, I mean, even if Live Aid were to happen or, or something of that magnitude, I don't think, I'd say probably half the planet wouldn't get it anyway. They probably wouldn't be interested, unfortunately, because I actually remember that day back in 1985. And there was, you could, add, like, I wasn't at the concert. In fact, I was working on the day, and but on the way home, uh, I was, I had, you know, listened to some of it on, on, on radio, and it was electric, it really, really was, and as you say, if, that, if something like that magnitude could happen again, uh, it would be fantastic, it really would, I mean, if, if that's what it would take to, to you know, get rid of the, these Dracos, negative energies, it would be amazing, but then again, as you, say, as you, just, you just said, to David, that it, within a couple of days of 
that happening live aid then we had the 7-7 bombing so whatever good could have been done from that was it was marred by by this this uh i'm, I'm not going to say a terrorist att- well i suppose it is a terrorist attack but i mean uh, not not by terrorists i think it was government uh, orientated personally speaking well just imagine a tribunal where the real people who have been pulling the strings in what Corey's folks call the secret earth government are actually arrested and then their crimes are actually revealed to us as ugly and as dirty as that is this has been hiding in the background of everybody's mind i had nuclear war drills when i was in school where we had to get under our desk as if that's going to do anything for a freaking mushroom cloud <laughs> yeah we've been living under this everybody alive has been living under the tyranny of these people who have wanted to, to destroy us and the amount of inspiration that would happen when the real problem is finally exposed and it's dealt with instead of it's being black versus white or Muslim versus Christian, the effect that's going to have is tremendous. Absolutely. Definitely. Now, do you have more questions? Do you want to pass one off to Corey? We have loads of questions. Yeah, uh, Corey, this question came in on, on the chat room there from uh, one of the listeners calling themselves Powers. And this says, question for Corey. Did the family that you and Gonzale selected to leave the Mars con- colony make it safely to the moon colony? What happened to the family member that was not present? And is the, whole, is the, the entire family safe, including the missing one? Um, unfortunately, no. Um, they remained behind, and um, I have not received any further intelligence about what occurred after we left. I, um, I it would be very interesting, uh, as someone stated, to be a fly on the wall to see what occurred after um, we were pulled out of uh, the. Large, the largest cell they had that they put us in in the, in the back, but uh, I have I have no idea uh, what what became of that entire situation. Okay. But Corey, you also said that all the people that are held in slavery will be released as a part of this greater disclosure effort, right? Yes. All in in the end, when th- there is a full disclosure. Um, not only will all of these ICC, SSP um, facilities, all of their infrastructure be handed over to humanity, but all, all of these slaves and, quite honestly, a lot of the SSP Alliance people have, have – they, they've been through a lot. They're pretty they, – they, you know, these aren't just angelic people. A lot of them are damaged people. They're going to be offered – a sanctuary at one of the allied beings planets or colonies to where they're going to be given an ab- a, a time to recover from all of the horrible things that happened to them before they are offered um, reintegration into earth society Okay, what would you say, in between yourself and David, what would you say will take place in the next three years? What would you, I mean, I don't want to put a date on it because, oh, you know, we don't want to get stuck on dates for obvious reasons, but given the window of the next three years, what would you think might happen, um, you know, to the planet and to, you know, will we get the disclosure, will we get what we want? Uh, do you reckon the event might happen in that window? I would say it's likely, but from everything I'm being told, it very much depends on each and every one of us. It depends on on us and our awakening and us learning about our shared consciousness and the power of our power of our shared consciousness. Our shared consciousness is what these, I guess, Illuminati groups have been working really hard to keep us unaware of. They use our shared consciousness and its co-creative abilities as the root of their black magic. Mm. They use media and and all these different things David was talking about, these fear porn things to plant seeds in our consciousness. And we have a, a vast spectrum of emotions that help activate our consciousness and and it's 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 a gift 
and it's it's also not so much of a gift until we learn to control it. But they'll enact a false flag or put out another huge movie that causes our consciousness, mass consciousness, and our emotions to make that incident occur. So our act, actual co-creative consciousness abilities are the power, the root power of this cabal's black magic. And if we can reclaim that power, we have the power to make this happen tomorrow if we wanted. Yeah, we just or, have to to, to um, increase the level of consciousness on the planet. Absolutely. Increase it. Okay, Steve, over to you for more questions there. Right, well, I think the last one was actually to to David so this one is is for Corey again this is one of the email questions that we received in earlier and it says in his book about the tall whites in Nevada uh, Hall mentioned that they asked for and the military satisfied their wish for one million children's outfits of clothing apparently the military never asked a single question hoping to obtain technology transfer Hall also said the tall whites never ceased to repeat that they love their children much more than earth parents love their children. The tall whites specifically uh, demanded that Hall not be placed under any clearance or oath. And the, 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 again, they're just looking for your comments on that one. Well, there, you know, this this group is um, is a part of this uh, loosely a part of this super. Um, federation they there there's a lot of jealousy of a lot of these ETs of humanity as strange as this sounds through all the tampering of our genetics and our light bodies and all these all this tampering that they've done to this great experiment for all this all of these millennia we have developed this extremely wide spectrum of emotions that they only f- experience a narrow band of. And the problem is we don't know how to control them, and we're ruled by those emotions. So a lot of them are very Vulcan-like and see this as a weakness. They have very strong and narrow band of emotions and yes, they would see I'm in full control of my emotions and I fully love my offspring and some of you, your people, murder your children or do this to your other horrible things I won't mention to your children on your planet and and make comments like that. But, um, you know, there, there, there is a definite disparaging feeling from a lot of those beings towards humanity. Well, they say about like uh, us doing horrible things to our children, just out of curiosity, uh, would the, the likes of vaccination programs, would, would that be considered being abusive to our children? I believe so. I, I, I def- I'm not going to name the name, but uh, I worked for a pharmaceutical company that uh, produces that produces vaccinations, and uh, I, I spoke to uh, the uh, the bi- the engineer bioengineers, and uh, they said that they do not give their children the vaccinations. Yeah, that's quite. It's uh, it's it's interesting when you hear the, the likes of that. We actually had a seminar here last week, and we, we mentioned at the seminar about uh, chemotherapy. And Alan said that uh, you know, in a recent study, a lot of doctors were were asked if they or one of their children uh, came down with with cancer, would they get down the road of chemotherapy? And I think something like seventy five percent was seventy five seventy five percent of the doctors said no, they wouldn't get down that road. So you kind of when you hear that, you kind of wonder, you know, are we just being mm. experimented on? Mm-hmm. Big yeah, time. it's it's horrible. Okay, so basically, I mean, do you have more questions there? We can, do you want to crack on? Pages, pages, pages of questions. Pages and pages. Those are, I'm yeah. just, cause I'm I can only imagine. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Give, give us another one there. 
Okay, who who we got? We go with uh, with David this time. Well, actually, I suppose both both of, both of the lads. This this one come in from Chris. Chris is a long time listener of the show, and and he, Chris has said, uh, "Hi lads, could you ask David if possible? Has has he ever con- has he ever considered, or is he concerned that he may be being used?" Uh, to spread disinformation as some of the predictions, the recent predictions, have not come to fruition? Well, always as an investigator, my role is to be skeptical of my sources. Uh, We do know that there were plans in place to have mass arrests and that events occurred that destroyed the lives of the people who were planning them. And for example, there was a case that showed up in the news for a while where this guy actually goes into the White House, I think it was the White House, and shot people. And it's one of these false flag, you know, lone nut gunman kind of things. Hmm. There have been multiple attempts to try to get mass arrests to happen. And unfortunately... I am guilty, as are others, of wanting to talk about this and wanting to get too specific about when and how and actually tipping off the enemy so that they were able to eliminate that from happening. And, Corey, in fact, one of the things that you and I first talked about when I first started to talk to you was how there had been several attempts that were made that got infiltrated like this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, the... They're, they they infiltrate everything. They're they're extremely good at that. And and also there's that uh, um, AI um, technology aspect to the equation, to where they can um, see probable futures and uh, are able to sidestep problems like that. Well, I know when David was on the last time, we were actually talking about this. And David, we were talking about the looking glass technology. And I remember you saying that, you know, we were talking about 2012, coming, to, coming up to 2012. And you said that they couldn't get beyond 2012. There seemed to be some kind of timeline shift or a change in the timeline where you couldn't see past that. Do you have an up-to-date on that? Do you know actually what happened? Are they still using looking glass and are they still having that problem? The latest intel that I have dovetails with what Corey is saying and also some of the intel was from people that he introduced me to. Nobody expected in the cabal the events that are now happening at the speed that they're happening. They They had foreseen that the sequence of events that's now taking place would occur, but they thought they had a lot more time. Yeah. And that therefore does indicate that although apparently some technologies can still view probable futures, it's not like it's completely blanked out. Hmm. It's no longer accurate. It's no longer serving them in a functional way, and they are ever increasingly being surprised by unexpected events that they could not have anticipated and therefore prepared for before they happen. Yeah, yeah. Because we've we've heard from another guest who actually said that because there was a, well, he feels anyway, based on his research, that there was a timeline change. And although certain things were supposed to happen, because of the the energy coming into the the, the universe, the solar system, and made various changes, that the timeline, the kind of negative timeline we were supposed to be on is now on, we're on a positive timeline. And maybe this negativity is just part of the, you know, war going down the Bert Canal, and there's going to be a few pains, but at the end of it, it's going to be joyous. I mean, I think this is his take on it. I mean, absolutely. Do you feel that we, you, you know, know, that's what's happening? Yeah, when I, when I, absolutely, I do. When I was in contact with uh, Jacob, who, as I said, was this guy that worked for the Rothschilds in the space program division, and was actually very directly involved in helping them in many ways, uh, and also working as a whistleblower at the same time, and actually got in a lot of trouble for it more than once. Um, He was very overconfident about the power of their ability to look into the future. Mm. And he would laugh and say, look, this system is foolproof, and we know what's coming, and it it works, and nothing is going to change that. Well, 
That's the way they all felt. And reality itself appears to have been structured in such a way where there is a habitable timeline that actually is a real place that you can time travel into and you can live there and you can have your life be there. And that is real. And that's what they were seeing. But the scope of the technology of these sphere beings apparently is so great that although that timeline does exist, it's not the one that actually we're going into. And it's not the one that will take place. And the cabal is not allowed to see the real timeline. They're given a completely compartmentalized alternative reality that they think is true, but is actually not what's going to be happening. Hmm. And Corey, I don't know if you want to add something on this, but that's my take on it. Okay. And and I, I agree. I agree. They're um, our – and I, I go back to consciousness on this. Our consciousness affects timelines. And um, the technology that um, they have used so successfully in the past is not working the way it used to. And uh, it is – and, and, and basically an AI-based supercomputer that spits out very accurate probable futures. And um, the, uh, there's a, a very strong AI presence, and a group of these people are AI prophets, basically. And there is a strong AI aspect to what's going on here on Earth that we haven't even begun to cover. And um, there, there's probably not even enough time to get into that. But um, it, it's, it's not working like it used to. Mm. Well, I know I definitely can say over here in Ireland we've had major protests regarding they want to privatise our water and charge us for it, which we already pay. Now, I think the government thought that people, the Irish people, would just sit down and go, Asher, what can you do? And not do anything about it. But we've had mass protests and people adamant that they're not paying it. I mean, at least 700,000 out of the probably just over a million people that should be paying it aren't paying it. And we had ceremonial burning the bills in the middle of the main street in Dublin and certain areas around the country. I mean, the consciousness in Uh, Ireland has risen on a phenomenal level. And it's brilliant to see. And the government did not. And the people who manipulate, I mean, Europe control all the countries, as you know. And um, I don't think they expected the people of Ireland to do what they did. Well, yeah, that's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I mean, what, are they going to start charging for oxygen next in the air? I mean, water falls out of the skies. The, the sun produces water. I mean, the water, in, I mean, come on. Yeah, uh, that's that's just absolutely. The more ridiculous they get, and the more draconian they get on the laws they pass, the more it's going to force people to wake up. And that's what's happening. That's exactly what's ha- happening over here in Ireland. Even people who are very law-abiding are turning around and saying, "Ah, oh, now you're ridiculous. You're taking the pee now. We're not going to be doing this. Where are you going with your laws?" And they're trying to sneak in laws underneath the radar. You know, our government and people are looking at it and going, "Now, hang on a minute, I'm not, I'm not doing this. You can send me to jail. I'm not doing this." And this is what's happening over here in Ireland, and it's brilliant to see. I mean, I've got an 86-year-old auntie who doesn't want to pay the water meter charges. They're saying, "Why should I pay it when I pay it already in my taxes?" You know, and she's 86, and there's loads of people around the country who are just saying, "No, nah, look, lock me up, go on," you know, and. Um, I mean, what are the government going to do? They're so frustrated. They've really woke up. And this big thing that's happened in Ireland with the water has woke up uh, so many people over here in Ireland. And even in Europe, with what's going on around Europe, um, so many people, especially the Greek Greek situation, that's woke up an awful lot of people as well. So, you know, I think the consciousness of the planet, just going to finish up, because I know we're up against the clock here, but just to finish up, I just think the consciousness of the planet 
and um, it's happening. I think it is happening, and on an exponential level, I think it is increasing, and hopefully we will see disclosure quite quickly, and you know, um, a light being shone down them rabbit holes where we'll actually see what the cabal did and what they were up to, and they will be exposed, and fingers crossed, you know, that's, um, that will happen in the next couple of years. But I'll just say thanks to Corey and thanks to David. I definitely think... We're going to have to do a part two. Steve has two quick questions to to get in before we wind things up. So, Steve, yeah, over to you. Sure. I, I've got two quick sure, questions. If, sorry, if, go if, ahead. If, 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 and I'm sorry, if I might add, you know, post-disclosure, we're going to be moving into more of a natural law kind of system and more of an Ubuntu, like, uh, is it Michael Tellinger? Yeah. Uh, type system. And uh, we, we speak more about this um, in in. I know that's a lot to cover in two hours, and, and I'm sure we can do maybe a part two later. Of course, yeah. we speak a lot. We speak a lot more about this in our in our Guyam TV interviews that you know people can look at. Brilliant. No, we definitely do a part two. Steve, do you want to throw them two questions? Yeah, over? we've got two questions and a, and a sneaky one as well. <laughs> uh, uh, There's always a sneaky one. Are, always you, are you watching the clock? You I'm watching, watching the right. clock. I'm watching. Yeah, the first question is from Mike. Uh, Mike Mike says massive U.S. and NATO troops and military equipment have been transported all over Europe, and it's obvious that all this massive build-up over the last weeks and months is in preparation for a large war against Russia on European soil. There also have been countless prophecies about this major war against Russia and Germany being the major playground. Once again, do you have any intel on this? Are we really close to a war? We've been really close to uh, World War III for quite some time, but it's been prevented over and over and over and over. Um, It's been put into our mass consciousness that there's going to be a, a great war of wars. But from what I'm being told, the other half knows what's going on. Putin is one of the people kn- knows more about what's going on in space than just about any other person on the planet. And um, it takes two people to tango, and I don't know if they're going to want to do the same dance that the West is going to want to do. So I, I, I personally do not see it happening. Well, yeah, and I have an abundance of insiders who have all shared with me how very strange interventions keep taking place over and over again. Um, And I'll give you some disparaging examples. Some black ops aspect of the United States tried to send in a team of uh, scuba divers to plant a small explosive device on an oil rig in the Persian Gulf. And it would have been the BP oil spill all over again, but in the Persian Gulf. Yeah. And they felt that would make the Arabs angry enough that they could get World War III. And the scuba divers tried for 12 hours to swim to the rig with the backpack on that had the bomb. And there was this barrier in the ocean. And it was they, they reported it as being like an elastic, rubbery skin was invisible to the eye. But the farther they tried to swim into it, the more it would spring back and and push them back away from it. They tried to go over it. They tried to swim over it on the surface of the water. They tried to burrow under it. And after 12 hours of total futility, they decided they couldn't get through it. They've done all kinds of stuff. They They tried to roll tanks into Syria, and the tanks wouldn't start. They tried to drop a bomb on somebody and blame it on a false flag, and the bomb bay doors wouldn't open. They've had aircraft that were loaded up with all kinds of, uh, you know, dead bodies and stuff. That was one of the things they tried to do with Russia, the MH17 crash. There's a huge story with that. So they they will try, but they're not allowed to succeed over and over again. Yeah, we heard something about CERN, that, that uh, the, the, the whole CERN thing as well, that certain powers that are outside of uh, obviously this reality are making sure that doesn't that doesn't happen as well. None of that stuff's going to be allowed to happen, and that's such an important point. People have we're so conditioned by action movies to think of the hero coming in and vanquishing the villain in a hail of gunfire, and people are trained to believe in that script. So a lot of people are having trouble with the sphere beings because they say, "Well, why don't these great ETs come and save us?" But what they're actually doing is so much more cool than that. They're keeping the villain from being able to win but they're leaving it up to us to finish them off. 
Okay, that's that's fair enough. Steve, you got another one there? Yeah, again. Is this a, is this the sneaky one? Uh, no, the, sne- the sneaky yeah. one, which which you, we may not get to, because it was just one one of the listeners want to know what, how how you guys feel about Cobra. Uh, but if we if we get to that point, but uh, Derek was wondering, will you ask David and Corey to leave us with some new pieces of info as he did on the Fade to Black show, and possibly, yeah, uh, well, same question to Corey as well. Well, I think you're kind of double dipping there because Corey already did that. Um, we. Okay, I'll give you one piece of intel, which is not really that extraordinary, but it is for Corey and me personally. Uh, I have two shows on Gaim TV. I have two shows on Gaim TV. I have Wisdom Teachings, which has about 130 episodes, and I have Disclosure, which is now going into its second season. And I interviewed all the biggest names like Graham Hancock, John Anthony West, Robert Boval, a bunch of really great folks. Guyam had a policy that I was not allowed to do more than four interviews with any one person uh, on my show, and usually it was only two. Graham was an exception, but even with the exception, I think we only got maybe six. Uh, So we went in there to do this show. It was going to originally be, you know, part of the season two of Disclosure to interview Corey, and we had every person in the hierarchy of Guyam, and I'm saying now the CEO – the president, the director, the head of production, the marketing staff, the production staff, everybody was buzzing about this so much because when we got Corey on camera, I started asking questions about the space program, and four episodes barely even gets us started. So what has happened, and this is new, so I did want to make this announcement, Don't ask me how this occurred, but it was signed off by the CEO, by the president, by the director, by everybody, that there's now going to be 52 episodes, half an hour each, of Corey and me talking, where all I do is ask him questions. I'm not really supposed to talk at all. So he's doing all the talking, and every single one of them is him just spelling out the scope of what's going on. Um, As far as specific intel that's new, I would say that the latest that we didn't already publish is what Corey had described earlier, which is that there are some deals being made with the Super Federation groups now where they're being more willing to cooperate, but the Draco group is now saying that it's a declaration of war, that they're not being allowed to leave the solar system, and they're going to try to take some offensive military action apparently. And it's when they start doing stuff like this that they get stupid, And getting stupid might include that they actually allow their ships to be seen in our skies. So it's possible that we are going to see them make some very dumb mistakes that will actually accelerate the awakening greatly as a result of them now trying to take this war footing. And again, we're going to learn more once Gonzalez is able to brief Corey, which should be in the next few days. And we did, we worked with a, wonderful artist and did a, an excellent depiction finally of one of the blue avians excellent that was amazing well, it was a very emotional experience for everyone in the room brilliant well that'd be great to see uh, and we're, we're going to get your details i know there's a question there saying what's your take in cobra but generally i think guests normally don't comment on other people's information would would i be right in saying that yeah i, I don't have anything negative to say about uh Cobra and his information, uh, uh, I, and I've been told not to cause any type of separation or anxiety between different groups and, and, and people, and that's that's not my goal. So I, I don't have anything negative to say about him. Yeah. Okay. And David? Well, I think that the Cobra information has a lot of similarities to things that I've said over the years. Um, I have noticed subjectively multiple times that after I talked about something, that Cobra would then mention it uh, as something that he had experienced. Um, I might be a little more opinionated than Corey is willing to be on the record. I think that it is important for everybody when they listen to me and when they listen to Corey and anybody else that you find out for yourself what is the truth. 
you take what resonates with you and you throw away the rest. Yeah. None of us, Corey nor I, we're not trying to come out here as authority figures. We're not trying to be gurus or saviors. We're just trying to share what we think is the truth and the information that we've encountered. We're not trying to say that you have to go to the website. When people write these emotionally charged comments, you don't have to read our website. We're just out there sharing what we know. Cobra is out there sharing what he knows. Some of it is wildly divergent from what we're saying. Some of what Cobra is saying is extremely different than Corey's personal direct experience. And there's others out there portraying themselves as insiders. And again, I think that if you really get to the core of what these positive beings are telling us, all of these little factoids are really far less important than if the person listening or reading comes away with a feeling of inspiration that encourages them to make positive changes in their lives towards more forgiveness, more compassion, more love, and more service to others' behavior. And that's what Corey keeps saying is the Blue Avian message. So even if people are differing on the transient details of this ET group is from so-and-so and and does such-and-such, when and where, the core really is, are you hearing this in your heart? Are you understanding that humanity is going through an evolution and that you are a part of that evolution? And that the more loving you are, the faster we get the future that we all want. That is the core. And anybody who is contributing to that awakening, in my mind, is a valuable ally. Thank you. That's uh, brilliant, David. That's uh, fantastic. Just uh, for the people on the, listening to the PIR stream, we're going to disconnect now because uh, obviously you have your show with Vin. But uh, we will just carry on for the next few minutes on the OAM United We Strike stream so people can just uh, listen up. We're just going to be finishing up, finishing up now. But, David, that was brilliant. I was going to say, do you want to summarize uh, about everything and what would your, be your take but what you've just said there is just fantastic is to you know for people to focus on you know service to others and to uh, focus on the love and to try and raise the consciousness and educate people as much as they can I mean you know um, uh, that's a great message that's let me great. just toss in one more thing Alan real briefly and then I'll hand it to Corey again a lot of people the, one of the most prevalent things that we're seeing on the comments in terms of the hate that we're getting is everybody is saying there's one guy who even said proof, 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 right? And everybody's like, you got to prove it. You got to prove it. You got to set up a camera in Corey's bedroom. And when the blue orbs come in and portal him out of his bedroom, you got to film that (laughs) and you got to put it online. It's like, no, dude, if we filmed it, if, if we could, which they probably wouldn't allow us to because of the prime directive anyway, Mm. Everybody's going to say we did it in After Effects. Yeah. It's not about the proof. And it's not about defeating the cabal through some sort of Hollywood grand finale ending mm. where you see a bunch of guns blaring and UFOs showing up in the sky and portaling Rothschilds up into space. That's not what this is going to be. Uh, what we are actually seeing is a consciousness revolution And Corey said it before, but people really need to understand this. No level of proof is going to satisfy you if your heart is not open. Yeah. No level of information is going to get you to make today a special day where you decide to be more loving to those who care about you and those who you interact with. That is a choice that you have to make. Please don't get caught up in all the little details And we have people, when somebody like Corey comes out, they obsess on him, or somebody like Cobra, and they're looking at every little detail. And, well, Cobra said this, and Corey didn't say that, and David is saying such and such. And, look, really, at the end of the day, I got into the UFO field. I wanted to gain information. I was hungry for information. And what eventually happened is that the beings that I was in contact with said, David, we don't want to answer all these questions. We're concerned about you eating the right food. We're concerned about the fact that you worry all the time. You have nothing to worry about. What we really want is for you to meditate, to relax, and to be kind. And if you do that, then everything is going to work out. And when they were telling me that, I was working for $5.70 an hour, $5.77 an hour, two cents above minimum wage, which as if that was some kind of gratuitous thing that they were doing for us. Oh, yeah, we're giving you two cents more than the minimum. And I was working at that point 
in a, in, a, in a room with developmentally disabled people, 12 or 13 adults who had severe developmental disabilities, who had behavior problems, who were taking their excrement and smearing it on the wall and screaming and biting each other and running around, and we had to basically act as umpires. And I was doing that work at minimum wage because I wanted to help. And yet the job that I was in was causing me tremendous anxiety. I would come home at night and have the screaming in my head and have to just lie in bed in the dark until the screaming stopped. And that's when contact with me was made. That's when I contacted these higher beings. And my life looked like it was crap. My life looked like it was never going to get better. I only made $200 a week. All my money went to rent and food. And the being said, David, you got to stop worrying. you got to calm down. you got to get your life under control. If you follow this message, everything is going to be okay. And now my life is completely different, and I can hardly even remember what that life was like back then. And it's because I trusted the core of all world religions, which is service to others and compassion. Yeah. And that is the core of the message. If you follow that, everything in your life will work out as if by magic there are higher forces who are obligated to take care of you as long as you adhere to the core of the message of peace and love and forgiveness. And how in the hell can that be Illuminati disinformation? Yeah, I told you. I totally agree. I mean, if it's all about what resonates with you and just, you know, keep away from certain energies that will affect your energy. And it's not new age mumbo jumbo. This is logical stuff. I mean, I do the same thing and Steve does the same thing. You know, we just avoid things that pull down our energy, you know, and that's really, Absolutely. you know, that's what we do. I mean, that's, that's not new agey. That's just common sense. Right, okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the, here's the deal. The, the earlier question that you asked, this is the other very common thread that we get in the hate, which is, this is disinformation, this is the cabal lulling us into a false sense of security, wanting us to be sucking our thumbs and drooling in our beds, thinking that God is going to take care of it and everything's fine, so that the cabal can actually go around and finish the job of killing off the planet. But what Corey said earlier cannot be stressed enough. There are rules in place in the universe, and and everybody I've spoken to who works for the Cabal knows about the rules. They have to tell us what they're doing. They cannot just randomly take over the planet. They have to tell us that they're enslaving us. They have to tell us what their magical practices are. They have to show us what they're doing in movies, in television shows, in acts of government. In media headlines, they have to tell us the truth. The reason why that is is because, believe me, they would prefer to just do whatever they want and never tell us anything, but there are benevolent beings that prevent them from doing that. That means, ultimately, we have to be enslaved by our own free will. Now, these people get into that as if it was a football game and they're rooting for their side. What they don't realize is the free will principle is built in so that we naturally defeat them at the end of the cycle. And that's built into the architecture of spirituality, which is called the hero's journey. My second book, The Synchronicity Key, talks about history repeating in cycles and that it follows a script. The script involves the villain being defeated by the hero once the hero conquers his own flaws. Everyone on earth now is the awakening Christ. Everyone on earth is the Messiah. Everyone on earth is awakening to the core of who and what they are. And the more we move in that direction, the more it is automatic that the negative will be defeated it's it's written into the blueprint of our own cosmic evolution Mm. this is not a false flag this is not illuminati disinformation the core of consciousness awakening is a scientific fact it's provable seven thousand people can get together and meditate and reduce terrorism worldwide by 72 percent that's documented evidence and that's the core of the message it's not a negative message we're not trying to say that you shouldn't take action against the cabal either You can simultaneously be loving and forgiving and be proactive in spreading awareness about the cabal and the heinous things they're doing. Both those things can coexist. I'm not telling you to sit at home and be complacent. I think it's wonderful that the Irish people have had such a massive uprising against an unfair water tax. I had no idea that was going on. I encourage that kind of stuff. I am very politically active. I I wrote a whole book called Financial Tyranny about the cabal exposing their wrongdoings, and that's one of the things that 
attracted Corey into the fray to in the first place. Yeah, and it's been peaceful as well. We've been making sure the protesters have been making sure that it's peaceful. You know, that there's no trouble. That's wonderful. You know, and uh, obviously you have some people that infiltrate and try and cause problems, but, you know, um, they would not be the, uh, the peaceful protesters. You know, that's all kind of uh, predetermined by uh, certain uh, people in government trying to rouse the crowd, the, the, the rise up for, uh, the crowd, you know. But generally, all the protests have been peaceful, and for that reason. And any time there is trouble, people, the protesters actually walk away from the people who are causing the trouble, the instigators, and basically they, they, they're kind of. It's obvious that they're not part of the crowd, you know. But listen, guys, it's been I'd brilliant. Like, I wanna, yeah. Let's give Corey just a brief chance to respond to what I said, because that is the core of his message, too, and I want to make sure he can get that out. Yeah, of course, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. David covered it very well. And, um, the you know, the core message every day, become more loving, become more forgiving of others and yourself. It stops the wheel of karma to become more service to others to raise your vibration and your consciousness. You don't have to change a religion. You can use prayer, yoga, tai chi, um, per, you know, meditation, in, whatever you use now. All, the, the, all this information is not new. It's a tenets of all the religions out there. And to be service to others doesn't mean you have to be a floor mat to others. So that that's... That's how I, I would I would end it. David covered it beautifully. That's yeah, great information. I totally agree. I kind of say love is the answer. Who cares what the question is? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what it is because it's energy, isn't it? It's a love energy. I mean, you know, um, two two energies, two emotions: love or fear. Which one do you want? Um, Everything's vibration and energy. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay, now, so listen, it's been brilliant having you on. I think we're going to have to do a part two. I know you guys are very busy and you're, you're, you're in demand, but it's just brilliant information to have it over here for our listeners over here in Ireland and the UK um, to hear you come on the show and, and talk about this information. It's, it's really uh, very uplifting and promising for the future for all of us. So a big thank you for coming on. I'm going to pass you off to Steve and Steve's going to get all your details so people will find out where to get you. Thank you. Yeah, Corey, David, again, I want to echo, echo what Alan said there. It has been absolutely mind-blowing information. There's so many people on the chat rooms there, so many questions, a lot of questions that we couldn't get to. But uh, unfortunately, you know, that's just, a, that's just the way it works out. And we've actually gone over time. We normally kind of disconnect at 9 o'clock, but we've actually gone over time. So uh, we're going to definitely have to do a, a, a second part. But I, I do have information here that I have posted up in the chat rooms as well, and that is Corey's website there, sphericalbeingalliance.com, and David's website, divinecosmos.com. Um, we we'll throw it over to you first. Corey, do you want to maybe give some more information there or have any closing statements you, you want to make? Um, sphereBeingAlliance.com will get you pretty much uh, to everything, uh, all, all of my information. And um, I basically uh, spoke about, you know, the, the, the message of, you know, loving and forgiving. So I'm good. <laughs> okay, thank you. And David? I would like to say uh, Corey came over to my house in late April, and we filmed six hours of me interviewing him on video. Some of, the, some of the footage is very strong. Some of it is not as strong. It did kind of serve for Corey as like a camera test to figure out what works and what doesn't work. A lot of people are going to be angry when they hear that we have a show that is now forming on Guy TV. There's going to be a separate show that's just Corey and me talking every week for a whole year, for a half an hour. Uh, that is going to be available to every subscriber. The basic rate is $9.95 a month. A lot of people have been complaining that we don't have PayPal. The president of Gaia told me in a meeting on Friday that PayPal functionality will be turned on within apparently a very short time, maybe as little as a week or less. So that's going to be really good for people in Europe who don't want to use a credit card. Um, so the, the hue and cry of all the people that are saying, why the hell hasn't David released the video yet? He's sequestering information. He's hiding the truth. Look, it's very simple. I don't have a lot of money. I can't pay anybody to help me. I'm doing this myself. I've been learning all the software. I'm learning Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere Pro. I've made significant progress. I do intend to release 
some of the strongest parts of what he and I talked about in a video. And no matter how much of that I released, it's not even going to begin to cover what we already did this past week in what's going to probably amount to the first 10 episodes out of 52. So if you if you can afford the $10 a month, it's a, it's totally going to be worth it because you can see my show Wisdom Teachings, you can see my show Disclosure, you can see the show with Corey, which one of the working titles for it is Cosmic. I don't know what we're ultimately going to call it yet. Um, I, I would love to have things not be dependent on money at all, but this is a small amount of money, and it's a way in which you can help us. Corey and I are splitting the proceeds 50-50, so if you pay to see the show through his site or through my site, we both get the same amount out of it. So that is fair, and I just, again, want to thank everybody for supporting us. We do need your help, and I really appreciate it. Okay. It's on, uh, it's on Finn, is it? Or it's on the website, is it? Okay. I'm having trouble hearing you at this point. Yeah, sorry okay. about that, lads. There's some uh, music coming in there, maybe one of these adverts on uh, the uh, one of these websites. But listen, the information has been brilliant. Thanks again. Um, as I say, people can find you there with the contact information. We're going to have the podcast up in about an hour after the show when we get that done we get it up there so if you can just bear with us for a few minutes we're going to wind up the show and um, if you just hang on there for a few minutes and we'll be back sure. here in about five minutes okay right okay that was brilliant that was david wilcock and curry good uh, et brilliant information there thanks to vin for us rolling over onto his time slot on pir thanks again for that vin and uh, much appreciated right next week just to wind things up next week we have a, K, a lady called kate curtis who's a healer and she was over with uh, james gilliland over on his ranch and she's going to be talking to us about her experience being over on james's ranch and also uh, a chap called chris coverdale if he's not in jail um, he did. He's uh, basically fighting the uh, the tax over there in the UK, and he's going to tell us all about the tax and why it's corrupt and we, why we shouldn't be paying it. So if he's not in jail, we'll have him on the show. That's the plan. But uh, for myself, uh, Alan James, have a good week. Stay safe. Take it easy, and uh, keep your energy up, as uh, David and Corey said. And uh, think positive. Focus on your conscious, and uh, you know, service to others. That's the way we have to go, Steve. Yeah, I totally agree. Service to others, and again, do try and keep your en- your energy up. Um, you know, e- eat natural and just get out there in the sunshine, and uh, just enjoy life because you know you can sit in front of the TV, listen to the news, and uh, hear all the doom and gloom. You can worry about all the doom and gloom, or you can just put it to you know put it in a, in a box in your a mental a box in your in your mind and put a question mark on it and you know look at it some other time. But uh, no, just enjoy life. If you have children, just you know just. Enjoy your children because they are the future. Just teach them everything you can. Uh, and, again, just, just, just you know, be one with the universe and uh, enjoy it all. It's, as uh, what Bill Hicks once said, it's all just a ride, you know. So just, just enjoy the ride. Okay, from myself, Stephen George, again, it's been a gr- fantastic show. Thanks again to Vin on PIR for uh, giving us uh, the stream also. And we'll do it all again next week. So until then, take care. Bye-bye. I'll play your mind.